So in a past interview that I was watching that you did, you made the comment about your work that it's not all about the fish, it's about people too. Mm -hmm. And that really resonated with me. Um, And people and collaboration specifically, I would imagine has been so important to your successes. Um, For example, with Austral's support of sustainability alongside conservation groups, such as in the Marine Stewardship Council, and the unique collaboration between Austral and Sea Shepherd to eliminate unregulated longline vessels from Antarctic waters. Um, firstly, the language and leadership used to strike up a relationship with Sea Shepherd. Can you tell me a bit more about how you approached that one? Uh, there's probably a little bit of just backstory to that, but um, I think uh, fisheries and certainly your agricultural audience would appreciate that if we want to move industries, then we've got to bring stakeholders along for the ride. So there's, there's, there's limits to what we can do on our own. And then there's things that have to be done together. And, um, and that's certainly been a, a feature of fisheries. So, for, you know, for example, in our prawn fishery, uh, we spent 25 years uh, trying to reduce the number of boats in that fleet from when I began was nearly 300 boats um, until finally in 2000, 2007, we, um, uh, we achieved uh, a fleet size of 52 boats. And it was an extraordinary painful and difficult period. But uh, in, those, in the fiery furnace of that journey, um, you, le- you learn the art of compromise, of um, respect for the other for the other party and and are listening for their concerns and then a capacity to uh, to recognize that um, it, it was all about progress and and uh, and, a, and a shared vision to some extent and so I think we brought that to um, a lot of our relationships subsequently um, whether it's been in marine park debates with uh, conservation NGOs or with um, Uh, more recently the collaborations in tackling illegal fishing uh, the the key piece has been about able to um, uh, certainly respect the other party but then be in a position where you're able to you have a a shared commitment and so it was with with Sea Shepherd really where um, uh, for a long time we'd, we'd probably had 15 years battling illegal fishing in the Southern Ocean, building alliances both with within industry and government, and with uh, uh, with uh, the NGO community, and you know that you do build up some uh, some credibility around that. So you, you know, actions speak louder than words. And then uh, later in the piece, Sea Shepherd arrived on the scene, and um, that was a bit scary. It was a bit scary because <laughs> they, they did come with they did come with a certain reputation, but. Um, uh, very quickly, uh, to the great credit of Jeff Hansen, who's the, um, the Australian CEO, uh, he came to realise that um, that we were serious about eliminating illegal fishing, and um, in that in that collaboration, we we saw a powerful synergy. And so, um, uh, the seminal moment was at the um, at the end of a 110 day pursuit uh, of a Sea Shepherd boat, a vessel against. Um, or, uh, with an illegal vessel, a vessel called the Thunder, uh, we um, we participated in that operation off the west coast of Africa, and um, and the simple message to our people was, um, I know this sounds a bit weird, but Sea Shepherd are doing the job that we should be doing, or that government should be doing, and um, I can't fault their commitment, and they deserve our support, and so it was. Um, that a successful operation on the water developed into a whole range of other collaborations to the point where we uh, we agree and collaborate in terms of building uh, a, a coalition or at least a, a voice for uh, for lawful fishing operations. That is um, finding where we can ways to oppose illegal fishing. Uh, we have a, a common voice around um, the need for ambition in climate and a. Uh, and a shared interest in removing um, uh, plastic pollution from our oceans, and so it's like you say to people: uh, people say, "Well, that's a bit odd, but what's not to love, right? You know, we want our oceans clean. We want we don't want illegal fishing. We want to uphold the rule of law, and we want to do something about climate. It's like it's like um, like apple apple pie and motherhood. It's like uh, just can't miss." 
yeah, they go together for sure. Um, and yeah, as you said, really beautiful to find those synergies between the organisations. If you could define it, what would you say that you're most proud of that's come out of Austral's relationship with Sea Shepherd? Uh, I, I think we've had a role in um, having them more broadly recognised by the Australian government. Um, the work they're doing now in West Africa is exemplary and the idea that, that Sea Shepherd with their, with their skill and commitment and their hardware, that, that is boats and runabouts, are able to go into these uh, poorer West African nations where they have no capacity to police their, their fisheries regulations. Uh, they can embark uh, local fisheries officers. They can train them in, in um, identifying illegal vessels. They can facilitate um, embarking those officers onto illegal vessels. And then in the, processes of, in the process of evidence collection and prosecution, um, they can make an enormous difference. And so whilst a lot in NGO land are out uh, sucking their teeth and wringing their hands in five-star hotels in first world capital cities, talking about how this and that needs to be done. The Sea Shepherd guys are doing it and they're making a real difference. The The message that sends to other illegal vessels in the, in the area is uh, sufficient to see uh, illegal fishing pressure dramatically reduced, fish stocks returned to the inshore net fisheries and the livelihood for artisanal fishermen recover to the point where uh, once again they can send their kids to school and, and um, repair their homes and have a, um, have a decent life. So um, that's pretty good stuff. <laughs>